The song and the man are born the same way. The unknown, the excitement, the euphoria. However, up to its birth, the song belongs to you. Afterwards, it lives a life of its own. Get ready. Three, two, one, go. Crazy man, it's crazy to me. Konas is my hometown. It's where my personality developed. In Konas and its districts. That's why this city is so close to my heart. These days I see it as if a part of my personality. This is where I've tasted coffee for the first time, being six years old. It's where I've had my first donut. And here I had my first encounter with the traffic lights and walking down Laivas Alea where there used to be a few of them. I asked my parents what they meant. Be careful, they explained. I was a hyperactive kid and a slightly darker skin tone. I just stood out visually. I would always follow through with my ideas, even if someone tried to stop me. Some kids weren't allowed to be friends with me because I was always up to something. People saw me as a bad child, but my mother thought of me as sensitive. He's always been sensitive. That sensitivity manifested itself in various ways. I would give him and his sister a task to weed a garden bed. Instead of doing what he's told, he would disappear somewhere. Later, me and Viva, his sister, would go looking for him. And there he was, behind the house, observing the life of ants. Everything fascinated him and affected him deeply. As a child, he was always very attentive to girls. <laughs> but then again, a mother sees no wrong in her child. When I was in the second grade, I asked my parents to get me into music school. This is the classroom where I started learning how to play the piano. After two, three years, he was no longer that fond of the music school. When he got in, the program lasted seven years, but in the later years, it was prolonged to eight years. This is the staircase that I see in my dreams with these tiny little angels. He said, no, I got into a seven-year program. Then I told him, Vaidotas, finish it and graduate. You can never know, maybe one day you will be making a living out of this. I wrote my first song when I was 13, I believe. Of course, it was ridiculous, written in broken English. The title of it was Love Girl. Afterwards, I wrote more songs and recorded them on cassettes. Later, I wrote a song about growing up, about not being able to turn back the time to when we were kids. I wished that seniors from the whole school would sing it, but I was scared to tell everyone that I wrote it. I was trying to figure out what to do. I told everyone that it was written by Dominika Vaidkavichis. Vaidotas Valikavichis became Vaidkavichis. Dominikas is my baptismal name. All school graduates sang it while I accompanied on the piano. 
I was so happy, but I couldn't tell anyone. Probably now they'll find out that I've written that graduation song. After finishing school, I got into a directing study program in the Department of Theatre Art at Klaipeda University. I was thinking, I will go there, and I'd love to record at least one of my songs. But I didn't have any money for that. And then there came an offer that you could work in the constructions digging trenches for drainage. I didn't need the money for the recording of my first song, so I dug trenches that summer. All I thought was, hell no, I really don't want to keep working here. If only the teachers from the school who'd said I would be digging trenches for a living, they saw me now, they would say, didn't I tell you so, Vaidotas? But I earned some money, and with it, I went to a recording studio to record my song. One of the owners was also a producer. He listened and observed me, and afterwards, he offered me to join a pop band. I remember I was working for one of the newspapers in Connors. Jozas Diezis, the manager of the band Omega, brought over the then band members for an interview, and we had a little chat. My first impression of Vaidatas was that he was trying very hard to absorb all the information around him. He was interested in everything happening around him, he was exceptionally polite, and that's actually one of his main character traits. That is quite unusual in the show business as well. Musicians interact in various different ways. Some are harsh, others use humor, although, yo, what's up, bro? Vaidatas is not like that, nowhere near like that. In my eyes, he's always been like a young school teacher. And then things turned around and they turned interesting because he left the band Omega and became a part of the duet Cosmo. Cosmo, Vaidotas and Vilus. Ladies, let's greet them with passion. Cosmo had this one song about a hitchhiker. The song even made it to the radio stations. I'll admit, for the first time that I happened to be in the office of Cosmo's record label when they got that song, they played it and asked me what I thought. All of us sat there quietly. We didn't really know if we should smile or what. We thought that the song was very bad, very cliché. So yeah, we kind of discussed it and agreed that nothing will come out of it. I felt that I wanted something different. But I understood that I was still growing. I kept saying to myself, you know, maybe later. Later happened when I moved to Vilnius and became a solo artist, Milano. We met through a then popular dating app. For some time we just texted each other, but then we met and it's as if an explosion happened. It's a rare thing in life to feel such chemistry, to feel as if you've known this other person for years. It happened despite the public persona that has been created in the media and that I had in my head. This sweet talker, a player, a pop star adored by everyone, a star who probably has a lot of woman fans. It was an image of a superficial person. Do you know singer Milano? Yes, we do. I've heard of him. Have you heard his songs? Some. Me too. Do you know why he's called Milano? What could this pseudonym mean? Maybe he's chosen this stage name because he likes fashion? Milano is in Italy, maybe that's why. He's a very stylish singer. Yes, probably. Maybe that's why the first date was slightly strange. 
On my way there, I was still thinking this is only a joke. But when we started talking, right after our first conversation, I saw him in the different light. It's easy to influence an 18-year-old. Producers were telling me that I had to be this lover boy, that, you know, this image would bring money and... No, you can't talk about your other half. If you have one, you have to be a flirt, otherwise nobody will like you. Back then he was a young guy, slightly lost, of course, affected by everything that older colleagues told him. After all, show business is cruel. Today you're in the thick of it all, and tomorrow you're thrown out the window, nobody needs you. All these thoughts were running through my head. Is it true that people won't like me the way I am? Do I have to wear a mask? Do I have to be different? Do I have to pretend to be loved and accepted? But that means that I'm lying once again. I'm living a false life. <laughs>